What is up, legends? Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all taking care, staying safe, staying healthy. Now, I find myself in a Tesla Model 3, which a friend of mine has kindly lent me. I think we've already, you've probably already seen my, my video with him, little review video of this very car. Now, I just wanted to kind of discuss something which was on my mind and a, a calculation I've been trying to make in my head to justify to myself the massive advantages of electric cars and Tesla and specifically here Tesla Model 3 because uh, it is quite something the maintenance cost of these cars and more more to the point the lack of maintenance cost in these cars and what I have to compare it to because I'm barely driving it today is my Ferrari 430 Scuderia and while this may seem like a pretty obvious statement it is insane the difference in maintenance cost and how much it will cost you daily to run a Tesla Model 3 compared to my Ferrari. Now I know that seems like the most obvious statement in the world, but I didn't realize quite to what extent that was true, to the point where it almost makes sense if you have a sports car like the Ferrari and you're daily driving it, you can almost justify more buying a second electric daily driver and the amount of money that will save you on your commute and on your daily maintenance will justify the depreciation cost and the cost of buying an electric car. Do you see what I'm getting at here? <laughs> so let's get straight to it. Now, the obvious first point that you all think of and that I thought of was the fuel, the, the gas, as uh, it's said in America, cost of these cars comparing. So obviously, you don't put any fuel in the Tesla and uh, it costs away in Monaco here, um, where I'm based, the charging spots are completely free. Now, how long will that last? Because when everyone's driving around in electric cars, it's obviously not going to remain free. But for now, it is free. So you don't have any fill up cost for your Tesla. But as that is kind of an unfair judgment, let's go with the Tesla superchargers, the most expensive fill up option for a Tesla. It'll cost you about 25 to 30 euros to have a full battery charge up on a Tesla Model 3. And out of that, you'll get motorway 600 kilometers and um, shed, you know, kind of average driving of about 400 kilometers. Now, being conservative, let's say you're daily driving this car. Let's say that lasts you about two weeks. So it's costing you about 15 euros a week to run this car if you're charging it at the most expensive charge. As point of reference, the Ferrari, you need to fill up, and if you're daily driving, I've been doing this, you need to fill it up at least twice a week, and each fill up is around 120 euros. So let's say to round things up, you're spending about 250 euros a week daily driving that car. A week, compared to 15 in the Tesla. So when you put that over a year, that makes a pretty big difference. So fuel cost, Yes, I know we all expected it to be a big difference, but when you put it, you know, when you actually crunch the numbers down, it is massive. So that's number one. Second is just pure running costs. Once you get this Tesla, there is basically nothing you need to do for it apart from a service two years later. Now, the only cost you have is a nine euro a month cost for your data in the car. Now that is actually free for the first year, so that only comes in on the second year. So if you get the car for one year, you don't even have that. And it's you know an irrelevant cost in the grand scheme of things, because it's basically one year of that will cost you one tank, fuel of tank, fuel of tank, tank of fuel in the Ferrari. So that becomes kind of irrelevant. The where it gets interesting is for example, when you take this in for a service, it's basically gonna cost you nothing. All you need to do is, you know, do your like washing, wash of fluid and stuff like that. Whereas with the Ferrari, effectively, every time you take it in, from my experience, it will cost you about 1,500 euros every time you take the car into Ferrari. They'll, they'll just find something to do to it, and then the hours that has taken them to find that something will cost you. So, and on average, you're doing that about every six months. Now, you don't need to, but I'm just quite paranoid and I prefer the car being in perfect nick all the time, especially because I drive it all of the time. So let's say it's about 3,000 euros a year on the Ferrari, and again, being very generous here, I reckon you can get away with it costing you 500 euros a year in, on the Tesla. And I doubt it'll even cost you that much because all the updates are electronic anyway. Now, one thing which is also really relevant, which can be a big cost with supercars are your brake discs, your brakes. 
So obviously carbon ceramic brakes uh, on most supercars and uh, they you know have their wear and tear. They last quite a lot longer, but when you need to change them, they cost a fortune, about 8,000 euros on the 430 Scuderia. So let's say you're doing that every two years, you're having to up, you know change the brakes. And that's another 4,000 a year spent on brakes. Whereas in this, it uses the regenerative braking so you don't even really use your brake discs at all. So you only change them, let's say once every four years, maybe, maybe, and they will cost you 500 quid, maybe a thousand. So again, it basically means you don't have any cost as far as that's concerned, because are you really gonna keep the car that long? So that is another massive cost with the Ferrari, let alone insurance. Obviously, anything happens to the car, um, it's gonna be a lot more expensive to replace on the uh, on the Ferrari because you've got carbon fiber. Whereas with this, it's basically gonna cost you, uh, uh, you know, not much in insurance because it's got so many safety systems around the insurers, quite like the, the Teslas. So let's say for someone of my age, it will probably cost you about 3,000 euros a year less to drive around in this car. Tires, tires obviously a big thing. Now, Tes these aren't actually the best on tires because they're four wheel drive. So they use the front tires a decent amount. Whereas, you know, on a real wheel drive car, they'll use it less. But obviously the tires are completely different. So the less you use the Ferrari tires, the less you'll need to replace them. They're obviously expensive. Let's say around 1500 euros for the tires, conservative. And on this, you know, let's say it'll maybe be about 600. Um, so that is another cost, which you're gonna need to take into account. We're lucky here in the South France, I don't need to put winter tires on, but if you're somewhere where you have to keep switching between summer and winter tires, it's obviously another cost, which doubles afterwards. So yeah, I think you can see what I'm getting at. This car effectively costs nothing to run because even the parking here in Monaco is completely free if you're in an electric car. Again, how long will that last? I don't know. So I've calculated that it would cost you on average between 15 to 20,000 euros less a year to run. Oh, 509 GTO, beautiful 509 GTO. So conclusion is 15 to 20,000 euros a year less to drive around in a Tesla. So obviously, if your comparison is just one or the other, then it makes complete sense to, to have the Tesla if you're worried about running costs, obviously. But the question then comes in, does it make sense to keep a, the Ferrari as a weekend car and use a Tesla as a daily driver? Better for the planet and potentially better for your bank account because if you're financing one of these, the cost, the difference in running cost that you will save on the Ferrari can counterbalance the cost of depreciation that you will pay monthly on the financing of a Tesla. You see what I mean? Anyways, I just thought I'd make a quick little video because I lent my Ferrari to Romain today and he lent me this car. So I was driving around in it, had the GoPro with me. I was like, I'm just gonna switch this on and see, see what the audience think. Uh, and if what I'm thinking makes any sense. So what do you reckon? Interesting also just to compare the running cost of a Tesla to a supercar, kind of fun thing to do. But mainly what do you think about having a Tesla or an electric car alongside a supercar as a daily driver? Does it make sense or not? And I'm literally, this is the first time I really start thinking about it. So I don't want everyone to think that that's what's gonna happen. We're instantly gonna go uh, get a Tesla, but it's also for any other supercar owners out there who may be interested uh, in, in, in this thought, in this idea that, you know, could potentially be an option. Let me know what you think. I'm interested in hearing what you think. And um, yeah, just hope you're all doing well and we'll catch up again very soon. Take care guys. Bye-bye.